Well, after several nights of property damage and looting, businesses on and around State Street are hurting. Tiffany Kenny is the executive director of Madison Central Business Improvement District, and she joins us now with what's next for businesses. Tiffany, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Tiff. Yeah, thank you for having me. Hi, Mark. Hi, Susan. Well, before nice we talk to see about you virtually, <laughs> yeah, it is nice to see. You. We're looking forward to seeing you in person. Be before we talk about what's next for businesses, uh, talk to us a little bit about how you're feeling and your reaction to what's transpired on State Street the last 72 oh, hours. Sure, you know we all are thinking a lot about what's going on downtown, and it's a, uh, it's challenging. It's challenging for our community. It's challenging for our citizens. And it's really challenging right now in this moment for our small business owners, uh, many of whom this is their their lives, their livelihoods being uh, damaged and destroyed. It's got to be heartbreaking to, to see these pictures we're watching the looting now and just what is the result of all of this. It is. And especially, you know, we have businesses that have been down there for uh, what, what's great about downtown actually is the variety of time they've been down there. We have some businesses who've just been there for two years, somebody who maybe just opened even this year. And then we have some great longtime businesses, people who you saw early on being uh, damaged and looted, like Goodman's Jewelers or Fontana. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and then I, I also want to comment out about a place like August or the Triangle Market. August is a cool shoe shop. The guy's been in business for two years. We're really proud he's been on State Street. And the Triangle market recently transferred ownership to a young couple who saved up for their dream for their for their future and they bought the triangle market and it was recently um, you know it got caught on it caught on fire during all of this so, we're seeing uh, you know we're trying to put it back together we're seeing video right now of people turning the boarded up businesses uh, into art which has been very inspiring <sighs> to see the downtown business district come together that way well, absolutely, and that actually is a partnership with the city of Madison and the artists in this community. They reached out and they wanted to put something together, the artists did. And so, uh, you know, Susan, Mark, you and I have got a chance to know each other for a long time, and you probably know, I think one of the best parts about Madison is our artistic and creative community. Mm -hmm. We've been privileged to put together projects like the Madison Night Market uh, or anything else, like we're hosting, Mac you know, the Art Fair on the Square is in downtown Madison, the best, uh, the best of the artists. So in this way, we had artists from all communities reach out and they wanted to participate. And Karen Wolf, who's the city arts administrator, did a fantastic job talking with the community and finding artists to really represent all parts of our community. We have Latina artists, we have uh, black artists, we have white artists, we've got the rainbow of artists making a rainbow of messages downtown. And so while you know, it's a really, really hard time, we're trying to bring a little bit of joy uh, while we figure out what we do next. And what do you do next? What's the future of State Street look like? Yeah, well, thank you for that. You know, I hope it's not as bleak as I hear because what's really challenging for these businesses is they're responding in the moment about their material items. And they, they also are responding about the changes in this world and how sad they are about um, what has happened to George Floyd. And I think, you know, what they wanted to do is tell people that story and they have to sit back right now and wait to see what happens next. They want people to know that they're just as sad and just as outraged at the loss of life. Um, and so they're trying to, like I said, tell that story through art. They're going to wait. We don't have a great plan right now, but we do have a lot of people who are stepping up to help us. And that's something I'd love to chat with you about today. John McKenzie, who is uh, just a local great guy, he supports the Boys and Girls Clubs regularly, but he came forward through that relationship that we have to say, I'm going to work with my contractor friends, I'm going to donate the people that I work with, and we're going to help put it back together when it's time. So not only do we have that happening, but I'm sure your uh, your viewers or you've already talked about the great efforts that Michael Johnson, Scott Rusnick, the Boys and Girls Club, and uh, you know 365 have put together. They are raising funds for our downtown, and they came they sprung to action both in uh, helping with people immediately after the very first day, but they've also put this call out for some funding to help us. And while we know the damage is actually going to be in the millions for the downtown, we appreciate the money that has been raised so far, and we hope that it will help some of our smallest businesses know that the community is there for them. Mm -hmm. People helping people. We'll get through this together. Tiffany, thanks for being with us today. Best of luck to you. Tiff, great, great to Thank see you. Thank you. I appreciate you, you telling the stories.